chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. And today we're going to discuss the infamous Mexico gym incident video that has gone viral recently. Quick note, guys, I'm not going to show the clip itself in this video. YouTube is very, very weird when it comes to stuff like that. My channel is not big enough to really have a fight if they decide to strike me or demonetize or something like that. So I'm not gonna risk it, guys. You can look at More Plates, More Dates channel. You can see it if you really want to. You probably have seen it already. But I wanna talk in this video about a number of misconceptions I've seen people commenting when it comes to this matter. Cause this is not as cut and dry as people seem to think. Like, oh, it's simply an ego lift, which it totally was but it's more to it than just that. But that's the first thing we're gonna get out of the way here, guys. I believe it was four plates aside on the Smith machine. Now the Smith machine, the bar in most of those, it's not 45 pounds, a lot of the time it's 25. But either way, that's a significant amount of weight and it was apparent that this woman could not handle it. So the first thing, I don't know if this was her decision, if it was the decision of the guy she was with. I don't know if this guy is her boyfriend, husband, brother, trainer, whatever the case is. She should have been told whether the guy was recommending it or she recommended to do it. This should not have even happened. So just a quick note there, don't max out unless you've practiced it before. It's clear from just the setup alone, that's what we're gonna talk about next. Based on the setup alone of how she got under the weight, she had no idea what was going on, all right? So whoever let this happen or whoever encouraged this, just no. Just patently ridiculous that this was even attempted in the first place. But if you look at the video, the way she gets under the bar, and I know Derek was making the comment how the guy was at the side or whatever. Guys, there was no amount of spotting in the world that was going to stop this from happening. There's the bench right into the platform and she was like this. So it just goes right down. If she did even have the strength to fully get underneath it and get it on her back instead of up here, she probably still would have failed it. But the bench being there, I don't know if you drop it down, if you hit your butt on the seat, I don't know, maybe a herniated disc or some other sort of injury, but I don't think it would have been as fatal as it was if she was able to fully get underneath the weight. There was a guy squatting, I think 365 or so, three and a quarter, and he was able to get under the weight, but at the bottom, a similar thing happened. He did not have the strength to get out of the hole, and then the bar rolls forward on his neck, and he did not have safety arms, so it drug him down to the ground. And he was fine, as far as I can tell, besides this like bruise on the back of his neck, but it's a similar circumstance. So that's just a quick note for anybody squatting in general, Smith machine or free weight style with a barbell. Before you ever initiate the first rep, it doesn't matter if it's high bar, low bar, whatever, you need to stabilize it on your back, not up here. And the way she tried to do this, right? That's what led to this happening. It was here only. She was hunched over, unracked it from the hooks, and she just collapsed. So this is rare, evidently, but even so, even if you can handle the weight and get it unracked, so to speak, do not get the weight out of the hooks in any capacity unless you have it stabilized on your back. Anybody who's gonna come in here and try to argue that is an idiot. And that's gonna lead into the next topic here of safety arms. So the clip I just showed of this guy failing the squat when it drug him forward because there's no safeties here, people have been commenting, I've seen, oh, well, she didn't have any safety arms to protect her, etc. It's a Smith machine, guys. It's hydraulically guided weight. There's no way to put traditional safety arms on a Smith machine. However, Smith machines, at least any reputable brand, or if they haven't just been broken off the machine after tons of years of usage, Smith Machines guys actually do have safety hooks. I'm gonna call them hooks because they're not arms, right? You can't really take them in and out of the machine, but any legitimate Smith Machine should have these things right here. They might be hard to see based on the image or video I can find, but any Smith Machine should have these adjustable hooks that you can put them higher or lower based on the movement you're doing. So it's common for people to think, oh, you can just re-rack the Smith machine at any point. That is true, 
except in extreme circumstances like this. But ideally, you can set the safety hooks on the Smith machine to a point where even if you do collapse or fall down or you can't re-rack it in time as the weight is falling, you should still be able to set those up so they can be caught before it leads to something like this. And this is another reason, guys, I tell you all the time, I stress this to my clients all the time, you have to record your lifts, okay? I know it might be awkward or, oh, it's kind of douchey, whatever. This can get serious, guys, okay? So if you're at the gym, right? Because a lot of people set up the safety arms too and they're too low to really have any benefit. Record yourself, okay? Get a side angle. It could be a friend recording or a training partner. You could set it up on a dumbbell or a little pre-made easy bar, whatever the case is. Prop your phone up. Record your warm-up set that you have essentially no chance of failing and then adjust the safeties based on how high or low you're going with the range of motion. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. These people that never record their sets, they never have any reference points, they just do guesswork over and over in the gym for years, you combine that with ego lifting, maxing out with a weight you're unable to handle, yeah, it's gonna get bad. So if she failed, she could sit on the bench and then either do this or kind of scoot out from underneath it. That leads into, you see what's going on here? The next issue, the flat bench itself, okay? You see how the bench is positioned in the video? It's vertical, right? It's going front to back within the rack rather than side to side. If you're going to do, this isn't even a box squat. A box squat is a whole different exercise where you actually sit down before squatting back up. But the box, or I should say the bench here, was put there as a safety precaution. You see how this becomes a problem? That's what led to this happening. Because if she was squatting onto a horizontally placed bench, right, where it's like this instead of this, she still could have been able to roll the weight or better so attempted to roll the weight off of her head. That could have been pretty dangerous in its own right, but I don't think it would have become fatal. This is what can happen. Because we saw in this clip, right, her head goes forward, it hits into the bench. There's no clearance for the bar to go off of. Like her head cannot move back in any capacity. And this could also even happen in a free weight scenario, guys. I would say it's less likely because the bar's not locked into place like it is on a Smith machine. But let's say you put your safety arms just at the wrong height on a free weight squat. Same scenario, vertical bench, and you do the same thing if you have your head up or something and you kind of get squished there, something similar could happen, right? Now, I'd say it's less likely with a free bar, like I said, but this could still happen because of all of that space the vertical bench takes up. So please understand this too, guys. If you're going to put a box underneath you as a means of ensuring range of motion or just tapping it, or if you're going to do like a box squat style exercise, it's called a box squat, guys, not a bench squat. I know a lot of people don't have access to plyometric boxes or at least like quality plyometric boxes. If you're going to use a bench for this, which I don't recommend, but if you're confined to only a bench, place it horizontally so there's some clearance in front of you, okay? But that's why plyometric boxes are used in this scenario. You can even stack up like bumper plates or something. Anything that does not have all of this space taken up in the front of it. That's what really doomed this woman, unfortunately, because her head was falling forward, she had no control over the weight, and then no clearance. And then one last point I want to make regarding this incident, it involves the guy again. Once the weight hit this woman's neck, and then he tries to pull it off, which of course he can't, he's one guy. Dude, the instant you see that happen and she's immobile, you should be on that side yanking plates off. You need to alleviate that pressure immediately and you need to make that bar as light as possible if you can. And then the other guys come over, they finally get it off and then it's too late. It's ridiculous, dude. I'm gonna, like I said, guys, I don't wanna turn this into promoting myself, but I am writing a book about lifting weights properly. People need to learn this stuff, man. Cause so many people in the gym setting are completely clueless They've been going to the gym for years, sometimes decades. They still don't understand basic fundamentals 
of safe weight training. It's completely absurd, and this is a rare example for sure, but we saw it can happen. And when you're surrounded by all these clueless commercial gym schmucks, that does not help your odds, all right? So I hope this video helped kind of clear things up. If you found this helpful, leave a comment down below. Rest in peace to this woman. Uh, God bless the daughter, dude. She's probably gonna need a lot of therapy. She's probably gonna be scarred for the rest of her life. She'll probably never go in a gym again after seeing that. But yeah, thank you guys as always. Thank you to the Patreon supporters. Tell me what you wanna see next down below. And I will catch you guys next time.